Hi everyone, this is Michael from TouchPy TV with a quick video tutorial explaining how to open PDF documents on the iPad. The idea behind this video tutorial came from readers on my blog after I wrote a post entitled Create PDF on iPad, Save Documents, Web Pages and Emails to PDF. The post basically explains how folks can convert documents from different file formats like for example a Microsoft Word document or a photo inside the camera roll to a PDF document using the app PDF Converter. So now that you have this little bit of background information, let's move on with this tutorial on how to open PDF documents on the iPad. There are basically two easy methods one can use to open and view a PDF document on the iPad. In this tutorial, we're going to be covering these two. Number one, we're going to be opening and view a document using the built-in quick look mode inside the iOS operating system. And number two, we're going to open and view our document utilizing already installed apps inside the iPad with the open in feature. To begin our tutorial, let's start by going to the home screen and locate the mail app. I would say that maybe 95% of all new documents, for some folks anyway, arrive via an email. And that's why I want to start here. So let's go ahead and locate the mail app and open it. So now that you've selected and opened the mail application, you'll notice the screen is split into two. The left side shows a list of all the emails you've received, while the right side previews the email you've selected. In my example here, I've received two emails. The quickest way to find out if any of these two emails contains an attachment is by looking at the email itself. In iOS, or the operating system that the iPhone or an iPad uses, if an email shows the paperclip icon, this means the email contains an attachment. It's also important to know that there are different types of files that can be attached and sent via email. For example, if someone sends you a photo, you'll also see the paperclip icon. To find out what kind of file was sent inside an email, we need to familiarize ourselves with learning a little bit about file extensions. What is a file extension? A file extension describes what kind or type the file is. For example, the email I've selected here lets me know that it contains a PDF attachment. How do I know this? By looking at the file extension of the document. To find the file extension of a document, look at the document name and right after the dot or period, you can see its file extension. Since we're looking for a PDF, we need to see if an email document has a PDF after the dot or period. Does it? Yes, it does. Now that we've found out that this email contains an attached PDF file, our next step is to open it and view it. To open and view our document, we simply need to touch and hold anywhere inside the body of the email for a second or two. Then very quickly, you'll get prompted with another menu. This menu basically shows a list of apps that can open your PDF document. If you look closely at the menu, you'll notice that right inside, you're prompted with a variety of actions you can take with your PDF document. For example, by selecting the print app, you can print document. By selecting the mail app, you can resend the document to someone else. And if you select quick look, you'll be able to view the document right away. After selecting quick look, this is what my PDF document looks like. Now, if I hover up to the upper right side of the screen and select this icon, I'll open up the pop-up menu again, but you'll notice that this time, the Quick Look app is not included. That's because we are already using the Quick Look view. Now, from this menu selection, we have the option of opening up our PDF document using any of the apps listed in this menu box. In iOS, this is done by using the Open In feature. For this tutorial, we're going to open our PDF document using the second method to open and view our PDF document using one of my favorite PDF editors on the iPad called PDF Pen by Smile. This is what our PDF attachment looks like when we open it in PDF Pen for iPad. You can see there's not that much different from when we open the same PDF in Quick Look. But there is one point that I would like to bring to your attention if you're looking to work mobile on a platform like the iPad. And that is that unlike a desktop computer or a laptop where you have more flexibilities with memory for file storage, at the moment, the current storage capacity on the iPad compared to those other platforms are very small. For example, the current iPad models are able to hold 16, 32, and 64 gigs of memory, while a laptop can be purchased within an internal or external hard drive capable of surpassing the 64 gigs. 
So what does this mean to you in the practical world? And is this considered a disadvantage? Not at all. For one, as more cloud-based storage services pop up and consumers become more confident in this technology, my two cents in this matter is that more people would tend to look towards going in the direction of saving all their digital properties inside cloud-based storage services and less in physical and hardware-based solutions, regardless if they work on a desktop, laptop, or mobile on a tablet. Plus, the great advantage of having all your information stored up in the cloud is that you'll have access to it at any time. So, taking this back to our topic on PDF, after you've viewed your PDF, where are you going to keep it? I wouldn't recommend just leaving your PDF inside the email and opening it every time you need it. But what I would recommend doing, especially if you're working with a lot of PDFs on the iPad, is to look into apps that offer methods of syncing or uploading all your PDFs to cloud-based storage services. Two of the services that I like are Apple's own iCloud service and Dropbox. Now, let's get back to our PDF that was open previously with PDF Pen for iPad. And the reason why I want to come back to this is so that you can get a better picture of managing your PDFs using document storage in the cloud. So what we're seeing at the moment is a screenshot of the document directory inside PDF Pen for iPad. On the right side up here, we find our PDF, followed by some other folders and PDF files. If you look closely up here, you can see where this folder holding all this stuff is coming from. This is the Dropbox icon, and this is the name of the folder we're looking in. So just to clarify, we're looking inside a folder on the Dropbox server where all these documents have been saved. How? Well, anytime a PDF document is open in PDF Pen for iPad, the app will synchronize and update automatically this folder on the Dropbox server. Also, if you make any changes, like adding a signature to a document or any other type of edits, these changes will also be automatically updated. Now, don't get too shaken up if all this sounds a bit technically at first. I can assure you that the more you play with this new type of technology, that you'll be an expert in no time. To help start your way to become this expert, working with PDF on the iPad, I put together a list of six essential apps that will help you along this journey. These six apps have what I considered some of the best features for editing, managing, and saving all your PDFs on your favorite tablet. These six apps are Evernote, Skitch, Google Drive, PDF Pen for iPad, GoodReader for iPad, and Dropbox. To learn how to build a productive PDF workflow using these apps, follow the link below the video to the website Tools and Application. There, you'll find more helpful tutorials like this one, plus our tips and tricks on how to use these and many more apps to supercharge your iPad experience. Before we end, let's do a quick recap of what we've learned. We've looked at how to find an attached PDF file inside an email by looking for the file extension of the attachment. We learned how to view a PDF right from inside the mail app with Quick Look, and also learned how to open a PDF in other apps using the Open In feature in iOS. Then we went over a quick overview of cloud storage and some of its benefits followed by my list of six essential apps to help you get started working with PDF on the iPad. I hope that you found value in this tutorial, and I hope that if you had questions, that they were answered. Learning is a wonderful experience, and it should never stop. With that being said, if you haven't already, I would encourage you to subscribe to this channel to stay connected with more video tutorials like this one.